Welcome to Lulu's Storytime, where imagination comes to life. Get ready to dive into a world full of heartwarming tales that will capture your imagination as you drift off to sleep. How I Met My Monster Illustrated by Amanda Knoll One night, when I reached under the bed for my truck, I found this note instead. Monsters meet here for final test. Z. Ha! Huh. My parents were obviously trying to trick me into staying in bed. I didn't believe in monsters. So I crumpled the paper, grabbed my truck, and zipped over to the garbage. I heard some creaking and rumbling, but I wasn't scared. Our house always made noises at night. But then, a voice under the bed scolded. Stop that stomach rumbling. The child will hear you. Voices? Stomach rumbling? If this was part of my parents' trick, it was pretty cool. I peered into the inky blackness. Five pairs of eyes blinked back. See? Now he knows we're here, the voice sighed. One of you has broken monster rule number one. Maintain the element of surprise. This is no trick, I thought. There are monsters under my bed. A long-necked yellow monster slid out, followed by four little monsters. Rule number two, the yellow one instructed. Never block the bed. All of you, scoot over. Hey, I realized. That one must be their teacher. I sat up straight mesmerized by the monster parade shuffling across my bedroom. That's better, the teacher monster said. Access to the bed is clear. Now, who knows rule number three? The purple monster teetered on his tiptoes and gurgled. Get the child into bed. That's correct, Genghis. And how would you do that? Well, Mr. Z, I would roar my scariest roar. All right, give it a go. Gengis took a deep breath, <gasps> opened his mouth, and let out a tiny blurp. Stomach rumbling would have a better chance of getting me into bed than that funny little noise, I laughed. The child is right, said Mr. Z, shaking his head. That was not sufficiently scary. Gengis, I'm sorry. You're not the best monster for this child. There was some creaking. Gengis slunk beneath the bed. Before I could investigate where Gengis had gone, Mr. Z asked, Now, who wants to try to get the child into bed? The orange monster looked at the ceiling and the red monsters looked at the floor. Only the green one looked at me. First, he stared at my toes and started drooling. Then he took a step toward me and I heard that rumbling noise again. I sprang into bed so he couldn't get my feet. Mr. Z blinked. Very unconventional, Gabe. Your stomach gurgles seem to be what this child needs. What I needed was to make sure this little Gabe monster didn't eat my toes. Right, you three. The child is now in bed, said Mr. Z. As every monster knows, the ultimate objective is rule number four. Who can tell me what that is? The orange monster bounced and squeaked. Keep the child in bed until it falls asleep. Correct, Morgan. And how would you accomplish that? Shadow puppets. Shadow puppets. She squeaked again. Gabe whistled through his nose. And I snickered. But Mr. Z said, interesting idea. Try it. Morgan hopped onto my night table and flailed her arms near my lamp. Silly shadows blobbed onto the wall and a cloud of fluffy fur tickled my nose. Ah, two. Morgan, stop at once, Mr. Z ordered. You're supposed to scare him, not make him sneeze. I'm sorry, but you're not a match either. Morgan's arms flopped to her sides, and she scuttled under my bed. There was some more creaking. 
and Morgan was gone. After all that sneezing, I really needed a tissue. Suddenly a huge shadow of uncut claws loomed across my room. Awesome, I thought, and kind of scary. I froze in place. Powerful performance, Gabe, said Mr. Z. But do either of you see a problem? Oh, I know, tripped the red monster. The child is out of bed again. Correct, Abigail, Mr. Z continued. And one of you must get him back in. Let's revisit rule number one. Maintain the element of surprise. All at once, the monsters vanished. Then I heard more rumbling. Were they hiding in my closet, making noises to scare me? Ha! No! It was only my stomach rumbling. All this excitement was making me hungry. As I reached into the pantry, I heard some chattering behind me. I sure hoped it wasn't that toe-loving Gabe. I yanked open the fridge. Ha! It wasn't Gabe. It was just the red monster shivering on the shelf. Found you, I laughed. Nice try, Abigail, said Mr. Z. But this isn't working. You're not the right monster for this child. But Mr. Z, she whined, it's not my fault he's not scared of me. I'm sorry, Abigail, let's go. Abigail clomped behind Mr. Z. When I heard the creaking, I knew she was gone. I grabbed some crackers and headed upstairs wondering if Gabe was gone too. I munched all the way down the hall, then went into the bathroom and brushed my teeth again. When I opened the door a minute later, Gabe was definitely not gone. He was right there and he was huge. I charged into my room and slammed the door. When I leaped into bed, I knew my toes were safe. Whew. I was surprised to hear breathing under my bed. <sighs> Ragged breathing and stomach rumbling. Hey kid. Gabe growled. Good to see ya. I pulled my covers up tight. Now if you don't mind, I'd like to start the evening with the Omnia Spuddle of Drool. I peeked over the edge of the bed. Green ooze spread soundlessly from underneath. Then the bed quivered as Gabe unfurled his spiked tail. Well, this looks quite promising, Mr. Z noted. When I heard some more creaking, I knew Mr. Z was gone. Gabe loomed over my bed and began sharpening his uncut claws on my bedpost. Huh, how'd you get so big? Rule number five, my friend, he explained. People food makes monsters grow. So thanks for the crackers. Got any toes I punch? I scrunched in my feet so Gabe couldn't get them. This was way better than playing with trucks. Gabe dove for it. His soft, comforting snorts filled the room as he snuffled the toy. I shivered. Kid, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Gabe was the monster for me. His snorts and ooze were perfect. I yawned, then shivered again. I was asleep in no time. Come back to Lulu's for more story time.